Once they come out of heat treating, they go into a process called shot peening. A shot peen machine is, is a steel, basically a steel ball that's thrown at the part. In this operation, we use it to do a descale. So we want to get all the, the scale from heat treat off the part, make it really nice and clean so it doesn't contaminate our grinders or our thread rollers. Okay. After shot peening, the bolts are cleaned in a bunch of tumblers. We might be trying to uh, deburn the edge of the part. Okay. Um, and so I take this uh, plywood bolt here. Uh -huh. Came out of heat treat. Um, and it's pretty sharp on the edges still, so we'll take and we'll tumble the product, and that'll give it a nice smoother finish and appearance. And what kind of materials do you use to tumble it? Uh, corn cob, walnut, uh, ceramic, it just depends on what we're trying to do. Next, the fasteners go to the grinding room. Nearly every fastener at ARP goes through a process called centerless grinding. Centerless grinding is, is the, the, what they call these machines. Okay. It uses two wheels, a grinding wheel and a follower wheel. The parts placed between the two wheels and the operator draws a lead screw that, that pushes the two wheels together and it grinds the part in the, uh, in the center of the two wheels. All of them are grinding. They're just doing different shapes. Sometimes okay. we're doing an undercut, a TD, for different thread diameters. The underside of each fastener is fillet ground to ensure smooth and even clamping. This machine is putting the fillet roll on the bottom of the head. So this one's without, and that's finished. Next is the threading process, where they actually roll the threads into the fastener instead of cutting them out. Okay, Chris, finally we're to the thread making process. So how does this machine work? Well, this is a thread roller, and it's a two-die machine. So there's two dies that have thread. The threads are on each side and the operator places the part in the machine and then the other guy comes across and it rolls the threads into the machine. So it's pressing, forming the threads into the part without cutting anything. Here, here's a thread roll die here. There's two dies in this machine and it's a flat roller, so it's a flat die. And when you want to change thread pitches or sizes or diameter of the bolt, you just change out the dies and then you readjust the machine. Depending on the thread and the length of the fastener, there are two different kinds of thread rollers. This is a tri-roll. We saw the two-die machine where it's a flat roller and it uses flat dies. Right. Well, this is a three-die cylindrical die machine, and the dies are operated by a cam, and they, they open apart, the operator puts the part in, and they come together, and they're spinning, and that's what rolls the thread onto the part. Uh, on this particular job, we're doing a hot roll, so we, we, we heat up the part, uh, not to a temperature that alters the actual hardness of the part, but just enough to help when the dies are rolling the thread, that it, it actually will even out the hardness from the top of the thread to the root of the thread. Okay, now that brings up another point. Sometimes in the shop, um, we'll say somebody might strip a bolt out. Does ARP recommend uh, dyeing the bolt or not because no, you guys no, you have done your you thread so much? definitely, we do the rolled thread and it's a J-form thread. Okay. Uh, definitely do not want you to run a die over over the, the fastener. Okay. Um, on, on the internal threads, you can run a tap in. Yeah. But as far as on the bolts, no, do not do not run a die down it. So if they've got a messed up thread, that bolt is trash. Yes. It should not be fixed and reused. No, replace okay. it. Why is that? We, you know, since we roll the thread, we, 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 we forge basically forging or pressing the threads into the part. We're not cutting okay. any material. Oh, okay. so, so it makes a better, stronger, more uniform thread. A die is improper. It's going to cut the fastener. It's going to take away that feature of the roll, the J-form thread. Each fastener at ARP goes through a lot of steps. But quality control is very important there, and it starts with this very loud machine. Okay, Chris, what was that noisy machine doing? Uh, that's a fatigue test, test machine. Uh, we're cycling the, the fastener on a high load and a low load, and we cycle that fastener in the fatigue machine to prove the thread roll setup. After the fatigue testing, the bolts move on to the tensile test. The tensile test machine puts tension on the bolt until it actually fails. So what, what, what it's doing right now is it's actually starting to pull on the bolt. And you can start to see, you see the load on the graph on the screen. Okay. And as the, as the, as the load goes up, it's going to continue to climb. And it'll continue to pull on the part until it actually yields and breaks. Yeah! <laughs> okay, that was wild to me. <laughs> uh, a bolt's designed for a certain strength, so 
our, our we, we design our bolts to be better than a factory fastener on the entry level, okay. and then we have fasteners that can look, go up over 300,000 psi. Okay. That, that uh, if you have a more demanding load, such as the Pro Mod car with a really high running 9600 RPM, uh, you know that, that's, that requires a different bolt than if you had a street car, uh, you know, turning maybe 4500 or 5000 RPM. ARP makes so many fasteners in different strengths. I wanted to know how to pick the correct one. You know, we can tell you the strength level, and we can run a calculation based on your RPM, your rod weight, your piston weight, your stroke, so we can determine how much load we believe that fastener is going to see, and then we can, we can recommend a bolt of, of the correct strength level. ARP makes their nuts in the nut blanking area. And one example, a single machine makes five operations in forming the nut. Once the nut shell is formed, another machine lines the nuts top side up, then guides them into a tapping machine. Finished tap nuts emerge on the other side. Like all the ARP fasteners, they are constantly being measured. So how do you measure uh, any specifications of a nut versus a bolt? With this, we check the concentricity. We, we are allowed 5,000, as you can see we have three at the most. Okay. With standards higher than the aircraft industry, ARP needs to be dead on with their measurements. What's it like to work here? Is it very um, difficult with quality control? Well, this company is so picky with me. <laughs> I, I've been working on so many companies for aircraft, uh -huh. and I never have the... the requirements than they asked me in, in this company. So the aircraft industry was less specific than what you have here? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because... Uh, I flew here, you know. I'm a little concerned now. <laughs> yeah. In fact, just about every working station has some sort of measuring tool or gauge used to check the fasteners. They have a whole room dedicated to calibrating the measurement tools. Well, we built a, a software program that actually every morning uh, here in the QC room, the operator will come in and he'll turn the program on. He'll, he'll punch one of the buttons and it'll pop up which gauges need to come in for, uh, for calibration. So you calibrate your gauges and measuring equipment here in, in house? Yeah, yes, we have a super mic. We actually have two of them. And, and we have one, uh, one quality control person that, that he's in charge of that. And he, he makes sure that all the gauges are brought up on time and they're kept up to the calibration date. 